know a lot about the behind the scenes, but bring us behind the scenes. How did you write the story? How did you piece the story together? Now, I know that it was um, done on a budget where a lot of homework and a lot of work had to be done by yourself. You not only produced it, you wrote it, the story came from you, I was there, you casted the thing on your own, you, 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 you did everything on your own. And tell us a little bit about that process. I don't know, you helped me in the casting. <laughs> you helped me in the casting. And, I wasn't um, fishing, I wasn't fishing. Uh, but no, 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 no. <laughs> you were very much of my casting director. And in fact, Maybe a, uh, little bit. A, a, a little tidbit that nobody knows is that when we were casting for the film, we discovered this young actor. Oh no, he wasn't an actor. In fact, he was in Shatek. And then you know, King yes, Wang called me and said, "Oh my God, you must see this actor. He's really hot. Very and his, cute. And his Very name, cute. His name is Pierre Peng. Yes. And, and and that's where we discovered Pierre Peng. He was just a Shatek student. And, Pierre uh, Peng is um, in Forever Fever, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and King Wang, King Wang discovered Pierre Peng. Really, actually, it wasn't me, but I put him in the, in, in my film and. And the year after Forever Fever, you know, he, he, he joined Media Corp, so, and, and that, that's history after that. So, so you actually launched the career of Pierre Peng. I want with to mark that right with here and now in Kinokuniya. With your help, because yes, you found course. him. Yes, of course, yeah, he yeah, walked through him. and my lust <laughs> <laughs> brought him into the limelight and, you know, he hasn't looked back yeah, since. That was 1997, so yes. that's 14 years ago. He, he, must have, you know, he must have been 24. Yeah, yeah in yeah. fact, there are lots of familiar faces um, in Forever Fever yes. and many of them are still in entertainment today Annabelle Francis yeah of well, course yeah, um, Adrian Park, I just Lim discovered Tong. that Madeline whom I've been wondering what's happened to her that the lead actress Madeline Tan you know what's happened to her and then I just discovered that I've been listening to, to her on the radio on 91.3 she has a radio um, program with Cheryl Miles, I think between four and seven, or you know, drive yeah. time, home time. Yeah, and that's her. So she's come back to Singapore and she's really DJing again. Now, when the film was completed, it really enjoyed um, a type of success that that you never imagined. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was um, just just amazing because um, you know I I had never produced a film in my life, I had never written a film in my life or directed a film in my life, um, and. Um, I, I didn't know where this, this film was going. I didn't know anything about sales, distribution, or marketing. But um, I, I was very fortunate that uh, an Australian film distributor watched the film in a studio in Sydney without my permission, without my knowing. And then he called me and said, you know, he was on his way to Cannes. Could he bring a print with him? So I said, yeah, sure. So he brought a print with him. And on the first week that he arrived, he had a private screening for Harvey Weinstein. Um, Harvey Weinstein is um, the producer of many Oscar-winning films like Shakespeare in Love. And in fact, the one which won this year, best picture? What this year? The, yeah. This um, year... Uh, uh, does anybody does know? know who won the best... Uh, best it, uh, it was a tiny... Uh, speech. King's yeah? Speech. King's no. Speech, yeah. King's Speech. Was Harvey it? Weinstein was also... No, it wasn't King's Speech. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, yeah, Harvey Weinstein is also the producer of King's Speech, Shakespeare and Love, The English Patient, etc., etc. So he saw the film at a very private screen just for himself. And um, Harvey Weinstein loves musicals. He's a New Yorker. And he loves disco because he grew up in that period as well. So um, he was very excited and he bought the film there and then. And, and then after that, I was signed on with Miramax for five years. Um, yeah. I believe that um, forever.